Thank you for joining us today for our webinar. We're excited to have you with us. My name's Amy Perkins. And I'm the Marketing Manager for Early Child Assessment Tools at Brooks. This webinar is on using the Light Skills Progression, and developer Linda Walls is going to share a presentation about the tool. But first, I'd like to go over some housekeeping tasks. You'll be muted for the webinar, but if you can have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box, or you can tweet them using hashtag TalkAboutTools. We'll take these questions after Linda's presentation during the Q&A. For best audio and screen quality, you may want to exit any of the meeting programs. For the presentation, you might want to minimize the GoToWebinar ball on your monitor so you can see more of your screen. You can do that by clicking the orange button with the arrow in the top corner of the control bar. If you need to enlarge the bar again to ask a question, you can just click the orange button again. Also, we are recording this webinar, and you'll receive a link to the recording in a follow-up email tomorrow. We'll also post a link to the recording on the Brooks Publishing website. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Linda Wallison. Linda has focused her 35-year career on public health nursing and collaborative community-based services to low-income and ethnically diverse families. She worked as a nursing visitor in housing projects in East Los Angeles, nursing supervisor in Santa Clara, and program manager in Santa Cruz County, all in California. Her clinical expertise includes services and care coordination for children and infants who have special needs or who are in foster care. Most recently, she supervised a research replication site for the David Olds Nurse Family Partnership in Monterey County. In addition to earning a bachelor's degree in nursing from California State University at Los Angeles, Ms. Wallison received her master's degree in marriage, family, and child counseling from the University of Santa Clara and is a licensed therapist. Ms. Wallison is the author of the Life Skills Progression Instrument and pioneered the reliability and content work through the tool with the support of a fellowship from Zero to Three. She is currently the director for Life Skill Outcomes, which provides LSP training and best practice consultation and developed an LSP database for use by programs using the LSP. She conducts training nationally in the areas of maternal child outcomes data management and clinically for reproductive function and other best practice interventions. So Linda, we're happy to have you with us. So I'd like to welcome you and thank you for being willing to give the presentation to us. Thank you, Amy. Amy. Out there, um, there's quite a large and varied group of you that are listening today. I am going to assume that I am talking either to program managers or to uh, staff that are doing home visitation services, although I realize there are some of you with different disciplines or um, in funder or federal management roles out there. Um, and I will be available for questions by email. Um, at the after this presentation is over. This uh, training today is essentially a 101. It's an introduction to the LSP. Even though some of you have had some experience with it, I think you'll find some of the information useful. And um, to start with, I'd like to talk about the purposes of the LSP. It was intended to identify individual parent and child strengths, as well as noticing needs across multiple measures, to notice progress and regression, although we don't see much regression over time, across the 43 scales. It was also intended to provide each home visitor that has scored an LSP on a family with an individual case summary to which updated LSPs are added in a way that they can see how the family moves over time. And it is also intended as cohort data for funding, for program research, and for thoughtful program improvement. So data that is collected should be shared with staff as well as funders and people in the community. Uh, the concept uh, that informed me in writing the tool is called utilization-focused evaluation. 
and the concepts mean that the data should be as useful to the staff scoring it as it is to the person leading the program or the funders. And that reflective practice using the LSP increases the likelihood of improved client and program outcomes because the two are intertwined. So practicing consciously with information um, that is accurate improves programs. There are 35 parent life skill categories. And by life skill, I mean the type of knowledge and behavior and relationships that allow a family to succeed when they live here in this country. The first category is relationships. And it looks at the parent's relationship with their family or their extended family. Uh, it's about their support system. Next is their relationship with the father of the baby, the boyfriend or the spouse, sometimes all three. And ch child and parenting skills. There are skills for nurturing, discipline, development, and safety that are considered child parenting skills. There is information about the relationship between the parent and the home visitor and how the parent uses resources. The next section is on education and employment. That includes language and this item is used for families whose primary language is not English and who have the challenge of learning English and acculturating. In our poverty populations, besides multi-generational poverty families, we have a large number of immigrant and refugee families for which this is one more ladder that they have to climb. There are two education items. One is for teenagers about how they are progressing in school. The other is education um, beyond high school and going all the way to college because our families are capable of huge change with support and can go all the way. Um, there is a item on employment and because um, we have often supported families in becoming legal immigrants in the different visitation models. There is an item on immigration. Any of the LSP items can be um, scored or not scored depending on what the program's focus and intention is. Um, then we have parent and child health. That includes prenatal. If you're scoring this on a father, that is prenatal care. There is parent sick care and family planning. There is child well care like CHDP and how the family is taking care of the child when they are sick is a separate item. Immunizations and dental care are also included. The most difficult section and the most challenging one in the field um, are the families that have mental health and substance use issues. There is an item on drug and alcohol, one on tobacco use because of its high links with preterm birth and bad health outcomes for the person that's smoking or chewing. There are items on depression and mental illness. And our poverty population has a high um, prevalence of depression, which affects a number of outcomes. There is an item on self-esteem and one on cognitive development and uh, learning disabilities. Um, parents that have mental illness and who are developmentally delayed um, are likely to show less progress than mothers that don't have those challenges. There is a section um, that the families struggle with on housing, on food and uh, the lack thereof, on transportation, 
on health care coverage, and that would be uh, insurance or um, Medicare and um, Medicaid and income uh, and child care. For a parent who needs to go to school or work, child care is a life skill. There is a uh, the final page of the five-page document is on child development. And you'll notice that I say that this goes zero to five years. If you are early Head Start, Head Start, this can go all the way as long as you are using um, developmental screening tools. Uh, most programs are using the ASQ, which goes all the way. And the um, items parallel uh, the wording of the ASQ exactly. You can also use any of the other um, vetted developmental screening tools, and some programs do. I'll say more about that when we get to the questions after. Um, the items are communication, fine motor, gross motor, problem solving, personal social skills, social emotional characteristics, regulation, and breastfeeding. If you are using it for a child over three, three you probably would uh, delete using any of the items beyond those covered by the ASQ. The ASQ is intended on any of the developmental uh, items to show whether a child has delays that make them eligible for early intervention. A score of one to three means the child is showing delays that makes them eligible for early intervention. And part of our job in home visitation is to ensure that these families connect um, tightly with special education so that the children get what they need developmentally. This is what the life skill progression looks like, and I'm not, not going to have it up long enough that you can read every word on it. We won't have enough time to do that. You'll notice that the first section uh, at the top of the page has identifying information. This is the information that is absolutely necessary with the exception of the web ID number and medical codes for collecting adequate LSP data regardless of the system that you're using to collect it. You'll notice that it indicates whether it's an initial, ongoing, or closing LSP. It indicates the date that the next one is due. It indicates whether they're male or female. It has race or ethnicity information, and we use whatever you're using for that, which is uh, different from program to program. It has a dose of service, the number of attempted or completed visits, who the home visitor is, the agency, and some programs like the um, Head Starts, um, Healthy Starts, need to connect collect medical code information, and that is optional. Anything else is not optional. It needs to be there. Then you'll see that there is the name of the item and the number of it, and you'll see what's called a Likert scale. It goes from a low score of 0 and 1 to a high score of 5. The way the LSP is used, it's an, a tool for the home visitor, and it was not intended to be a parent education tool. There are a number of tools like this that are used in the background to support home visitors thinking and information about a family that are used, the information is used with the family to support them but it's not a tool that is normally shared in writing because it is so long, so wordy, and so overwhelming for families that are um, fairly troubled in most cases. The way it's scored is that you 
think about the family and you circle the words that match what you see in the family. And you can write words on this. You'll notice on item one, it's about relationships with the family or extended family. And separated, no contact, not available is true of the mother, whereas the father for this uh, teen is conflicted, critical, or verbally abusive. And this is not the person's real name. It was my secretary. This is the uh, continuation of the relationships and the parenting items. Uh, we're on the previous page. Then there's relationship with home visitor, use of information, and use of resources. Then we go to education and the employment sections, the health and medical care, and the mental health and substance abuse. A program can be choose to use all of the LSP items or they can select ones that they don't want to use. Most programs are using all of them. Arizona was having such a hard time with immigration politically that that was an example that some of the programs in Arizona decided not to score the immigration one. Uh, basic essential section um, is the next one and then this is the child. You'll see that there is information in the heading that is included and that the parents months of service are what is used for the child. So if you're an early Head Start program and seeing a parent who's pregnant and she um, has a six-month-old baby, it would include the time that you served her during pregnancy. And the uh, child's age in years and months is included in this. This is intended to show a concept of target range. Each LSP item has a target range. This particular page shows target ranges that are four and five. A target range means adequate to optimal behavior. And it is more useful to use a target range and support the family's movement toward adequate to optimal to behavior in any of these areas of skills than it is to see whether they fall in the middle of a bell curve. We want these families to be able to fly on their own when they're done with our services. This particular item is a cluster of LSP scales used to demonstrate health literacy, and I'll say more about that later. Frequency of use. The LSP is scored generally twice a year. It's scored at intake, and that's usually after the first one or two visits, and um, some of you are visiting monthly, some of you are visiting weekly, and so it's an individual decision by a program what, how many visits you would accomplish uh, by intake. Some of the weekly visits um, may wait for the first month to be completed before they score the LSP. Um, and then it is scored every six months after and at closure whenever it happens. So conceivably you could have three uh, in a year, but uh, not always. The commitment to doing this is that the scoring takes five to ten minutes. That means it's about 30 minutes per family per year, which means it hasn't killed too many programs that have started using it yet. It has excellent validity. The iterator reliability has been running in, in research level studies that have looked at it between 78 and 90 percent. That assumes that the program has been through a training for the use of it. I have no information on how well programs who have started without having um, a training have done with their inter-rater reliability. Because so much is riding um, on our programs producing good data, I would encourage you to 
have training for your program. Content validity, we used uh, zero to three uh, fellows and national experts and uh, leaders around the country and it's described in the book if you want more information on that. Um, we are getting really exciting information back from programs. Um, we have about 200 systems up. Some of them are entire statewide systems um, and not just a single site program. The training is between six and eight hours. Uh, it can be for up to 40 participants. It is done at the program and you can arrange for a training uh, through Brooks on Location. There is a standardized training packet, whether it is done by Pat or by me, that every program that is using the LSP has a standardized uh, packet. We have train the trainer support and our intent is to leave trainers in place once a program has been trained so that new staff can be um, supported in learning the LSP. The training objectives are uh, to have staff learn the LSP format, the terminology used, primarily the judgment of scoring and how to do that. And then they practice uh, each staff in a training practices scoring an LSP on a family they have known for more than six months. And in doing that, they score it the way the family was when they first met them and the way they are now, usually at least six months of service. Then we start looking and counting the number of strengths, the number of needs, which items have shown progress and any that may have shown regression. We complete and interpret a cumulative score sheet on that family and then we use the um, scores from that to craft reflective questions on uh, a particular need or a particular strength. I've been asking staff at the beginning of a training to jot down the strengths that they see in the family that they plan to use for the day. Usually they list six to eight strengths. After they've scored the LSP in the afternoon, it's not unusual to have them find 20 strengths, 23 strengths, 28 strengths, and it's kind of an oh my god experience. I didn't realize they were showing that much progress. So it's um, a good thing to discover. The intent of the reflective questions is to support the parent's reflective function ability. And by that we mean their ability to think, link, and respond. That means think, think about behaviors, feelings, events, relationships, and consequences and put words to them, to link them to new or needed information, and to formulate a plan or a response to what they want to do. This is a core of parenting. It's a core life skill. And this is the short form. The cumulative score sheet is used to see an individual parent's strengths, needs, progress, and regression over time, to plan the questions, and to teach by asking. For example, since you had the baby, how are you stronger? For a teen to answer that is a life-changing experience. This is what a cumulative score sheet looks like. The blue shading on this is an indication that for a particular item, they have moved into target range. If you look at item number five, nurturing, you'll see that she was um, probably pregnant. It's a zero on the initial. Then at six months, she was not in target range yet on the nurturing, but by the 12-month LSP, she had moved into target range. 
And you can see that on the second page, she has a lot in the target range. And if you're working with this particular 15-year-old mom, you would be really excited to see that kind of change happening. Um, databases are available for either standardized PCs or servers. The reports show the number and percent in target range at each of the measures. We have a tool that can demonstrate the literacy level of the cohort that you're serving that can become the frame for the kind of change that your program is showing. The database produces updated cumulative score sheets for years, and it can compare multiple sites. So if you're managing a program that has seven sites across a state, you can have a centralized data entry and produce reports for each of the sites. It is easy to migrate the data to um, other programs for evaluators to use. And the cost of the database is somewhere between uh, 1500 and 3000 per site, and that includes the orientation and ongoing support. There are other um, programs that are not linked to me that are providing data attitude and ETO um, are examples of those. Those of you that have McV funding should be aware that um, Jill Feline uh, wrote up a crosswalk for the LSP for the different benchmarks. This is an example of the LSP items that would uh, demonstrate the outcomes for the um, maternal newborn health benchmark. There are items that relate to childhood injuries, abuse, neglect, school readiness, crime and domestic violence, economic self-sufficiency, and employment. And um, they asked for the number of referrals um, to community resources, but the LSB item 10 and 11 demonstrate the family's ability to use these. I can email this to you if you want to uh, send me an email. I can get you the long version of what Jill had written out and had been sent out to the states by HRSA and ACF. <clears throat> the research studies using the LSP. The initial um, study was funded by um, Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, National Institute of Health, and NICCHD. It focused on home visitation and maternal health literacy. Health literacy is the ability to utilize healthcare resources and to promote uh, personal health and the health of your family. This is important because of the costs of healthcare and the fact that poverty families are expensive. It has attracted the interest of many of the large national uh, insurers. The second two studies were funded by the National Library of Medicine. It focused on looking at the relationship between health literacy and maternal depression. The third one was on uh, health literacy and child development. There are two subscales that are demonstrating maternal health literacy. <clears throat> this one is called self-care literacy. And these are the items, and I can send this information to you also by email. They were uh, identified by Sandra Smith, who is a PhD at University of Washington and who was the primary investigator for all of the research. It's the first time we have had a measure for health literacy in the country for maternal health care. This is the second of the two items, and they were what were used for the uh, three research projects. 
does home visitation produce, promote maternal health literacy was the question of the first one. We used six sites around the country. They were from multiple models. There were 2,500 plus parents included in it and we had these three federal funders. Key findings, the overall parents achieved significant improvement in health literacy after 12 to 18 months. So does home visitation improve a parent's ability to use health care? Very strong yes, and it's no accident. The estimated reading level at baseline predicted the entry level health literacy scores, but it didn't predict who progressed or how far. Lower functioning parents and those with lower estimated re reading levels, interestingly, achieve the greatest gains. I think that says a lot about the support of your programs. The LSP can be used meaningfully to measure maternal health literacy. Health literacy and depression is a subset uh, identifying the depressed parents. And uh, health literacy and depression are closely related. Depression did not interfere with the home visitor's ability to promote health literacy with these families. Health literacy and child development. This should be interpreted to say that the same kind of skills a parent needs to support a child's development are the same kind of logic and skills that they need to utilize health care. And so when it says health literacy scores predict child developmental outcomes, we're talking about environmental outcomes, not things like preventing Down syndrome. Um, and it also, the, there is a parallel between health literacy and participation in early intervention. A mom with high literacy score, health literacy scores is more likely to understand and appreciate the importance of having her child with Downs in early intervention. Lessons learned. Maternal health literacy can be promoted. And we have one state using the LSP in their Medicaid computer. I'm hoping they will be able to do a cost-benefit analysis on a statewide basis. They have a cohort of 50,000 kids in that particular pot of data. Reflective skills are the key to improving outcomes. And reflective, the use of reflective questions appears to be a way to support reflective skills in a parent. The LSP is a meaningful measure and is adequate for full bore research as well as for inform informing programs at a local level. And home-based programs appear to be an effective channel for improving both the developmental and life skills and um, health. For more information, you can uh, look at the studies at the Health Literacy Promotion website. There is information on Sandra Smith's Be Beginnings Guides website. Or, or you can uh, look at my website um, for information about the LSP and data management or training. Uh, this one, I think, is a little bit out of order. It's about the depressed moms. And interesting, depressed moms demonstrated lower baseline scores than not depressed moms, but they achieved the greatest gains. Are you surprised about that? I was, and I was thrilled. Depression is linked with lower maternal health literacy, but after a year of home visitation, these mothers were better able to manage personal personal and family health and health care. Enhanced home visitation could be an effective channel to develop health literacy as a life skill and to improve depression. And the reason for that is that um, they were more willing to go for treatment. And sometimes just the self-esteem improvement from parenting and the strength-based feedback seems to have mitigated situational depressed mothers. And that is the end of our very quick review of the LSP. And we already have a list of questions.
Thank you, Linda. Um, I know we had some problems listening to my audio earlier, so um, if anyone's having trouble hearing me, can you just raise your hand through the GoToWebinar system? There's a little hand button on your panel. Okay, I'm not seeing anything, so I think my audio might be better. So sorry about that earlier. Um, so thank you very much, Linda, for providing that presentation. Um, we have an offer on our screen up right now that you can save 20% on the LSP as well as other Brooks products. Um, the code's on your screen and it'll be in your follow-up email tomorrow. Um, so now we're going to go into the Q&A portion. So if you have any questions for Linda about the LSP, you can just enter those in um, your GoToWebinar box right now. And then we'll start, um, start taking some questions. So. Okay, um, we have some questions that were submitted during the registration process, and so I'm just going to read those out to, um, to Linda. So, okay, so is it possible to get an accurate evaluation on the first assessment, um, even after just two visits? The training across the different evidence-based models for interviewing skills varies considerably, and the difference between a 20-year-old veteran and someone who has been doing home visitation for a month is quite a reach. Um, basically, the answer is yes, and the reason I say that is that you all... I say that is that you all have history forms that you gather a significant amount of information on during the registration process. You have also usually gotten information as a referral and the families um, generally are delighted to have you coming to see them. So with very few exceptions the answer is yes. Between Usually it's after the second visit. I had a program that wanted to wait for six months to do the first LSP. There is a massive amount of change that happens in families in that first six month period. In fact, it is where the most change over time happens. Um, we appear to be very effective on supporting family growth and connecting them with the resources they need so their lives get better um, significantly in the first uh, six months. Great. Thanks, Linda. Um, let's see. So this is another question from when someone was registering. Um, not all the questions apply to my parents. How does this affect the assessment, and how should it be scored? Zero. Zero. <laughs> if, you, if it is not an area that you work in, for example, if you are a PAT program and you are not doing family planning education as part of your service, don't score it. And um, this should be a program decision, not an individual um, home visitor decision. Okay, thanks, Linda. Um, so I think this was kind of covered during the presentation, um, but how often should the LSP be conducted for each family? And can you share the results with the family? Um, it, it should be done once every six months. So, so that, that if you have, have a family open for three years, three years that's, that's probably a total of uh, six or seven LSPs, which will give you a really good look at how families change while they're enrolled in your program. Um, can you share the results with your family? In the training, we are using the LSP to get, to get us, us closely, closely focused, focused on the families, families progress and needs. You can, you can share, share it with the family in ways, in ways that create change their within their lives by asking, asking reflective questions. If you gave this sheet of five, five sheets of paper to a low literacy mother who has dropped out of school, do you think it would have a positive effect? Probably not. So I would not say that you would give this to uh, parents in most cases. Okay. Um, see, our next question: Can the tool be completed across multiple visits, or should it be completed in one visit? 
It usually takes, it usually a, couple takes a couple of visits to do the first one. After that, it, it, you're, you're scoring the previous six months, so you are, in fact, using multiple visits that's to inform you because what you're recording on the first ongoing LSP, which is six months after the initial, is everything that has changed during that time period. Um, I think that's a good enough. Great. Thanks, Linda. Um, okay. So if you have any questions, please submit them um, into the box right now. Um, we have a listener who asked us um, to expand on how to use the ASQ results when completing the child's part of the LSP. Um, if you have a visual in your head of the score sheet for the ASQ, there is a section for each of the developmental domains, and you'll see a black shaded area. Any of the domains that scores in the black would be scored as a 1 to 3. It means they have developmental delays and should be referred and be partic participating in an early intervention program. And all the states have different names for their early intervention program, so it's whatever your state calls it. If they are have a score where it says 50, that means they score average. If they score in the 60 column, that means they have a score of 5. The target range for the ASQ linked items is a score of 3 to 4 because the highest score that a child with Downs would have would be to be enrolled and participating in an early intervention program, whether or not you continue uh, with them with your home home visitation model in addition. And I hope that will answer your question. If it doesn't, email me and I'll be happy to say more. Great. Thanks, Linda. And we'll include Linda's email address in the follow-up um, email that you'll receive tomorrow. So, Linda, we have another a follow-up question about um, the earlier question about not scoring some of the items that the, doesn't apply to the program. So, if some parts of the assessment aren't used or scored, do you still have an adequate assessment score overall? There is, there is no cumulative score. The LLSP does not produce an IQ. And the reason for this is that the way we support families is based on an individual need. If the family doesn't have food in the refrigerator, it doesn't matter if you have done an IQ. You want to identify the need and refer them to WIC or the food bank to get food. So each item is scored as a standalone item. Great. Thanks. That makes sense. Um, so if anyone has any more questions, you can go ahead and submit them now. If not, I think we're um, come to the end of, oh, we think we have one more question. Okay, so this is a question about training. Um, there's a large program with a large number of staff who would be using the tool. They're asking whether supervisors and program managers can attend a local training and then train other staff, so kind of like a train-the-trainer model. Um, so those are offered. Yes, Yes. we we are very supportive of getting you the training skills to keep this up, up and going, and um, there are a number of ways to do that. If you would email me, I will talk with you directly about what some options would be. It varies so much depending on... Um, North Carolina. North Carolina had 100 sites, and the logistics for that versus... Two sites. Um, it's all over the map. Two sites is, yeah. is all over the map. Great. So thank you, Linda, for joining us today, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, we hope you found this informative. Um, tomorrow in your follow-up email, you'll get a link to the recording, and so you're welcome to share that, that recording with other people at your program who maybe didn't have a chance to join us today. Um, so we appreciate you listening, and thank you very much. Thank you very much.